Hey, hello. Hey, hey, hello, hello, hey, hey. Hello. Hey, hey, hello, hello, hey, hey. Nice to see you, hello. people. Hey, really hey, glad you're hello, here. Hello, hello, hey. Grab a cup of hello. chai or hey, grab hey, a pint of hello, beer. Hello, hello, hey. Sit down for a hello. while and hey, let's do hey, something hello, stupid. Oh, 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 hey. I don't know what's hey, gonna rhyme with hello. stupid. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reactions. I'm Corbin. I'm stupid. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. Let it drip from your innards. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Follow us for your Twitter, Twitter account. Subscribe if you haven't, and hit the like button. Because why, Corbin? Helps why? the algorithm. And that's what we all want, isn't it? More important than climate change. I think so. And today, we're doing a movie review. <laughs> you little shitlets. It's a word, huh? It is. It is a word. It is. Is it? It's probably not, actually. Is it in the dictionary? To be I considered doubt it. a word, it has to be in the dictionary, right? No. Not no? in my opinion. Oh. If I say it, it's a word. Like flip a flip. That's a word. Ah, yes. Yeah, I don't need the dictionary to tell me what I'm saying is a word. Not uh, yours, dictionary. Who are you, you dictatorial grammar king? Uh, today we're doing a movie review of the 2020... I thought it was a 22 film. I thought it was 21. It might be 21. I don't know. It's one of them. Yep. Uh, Tamil film, uh, Rocky. Bum, bum, ba, ba, bum, Not ba, to be ba, confused oh. with that Rocky yeah. or uh, Rocky Bai. Yes. Or anything other than this film, which is a Tamil film, uh, directed and written by Arun Mathaswaran. I hope I pronounced that right. Forgive and, me if I did uh, not. The uh, starring. And again, mispronunciations. Apologize in no, advance. That's not, that's not him. Well, he is starring, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Va lead yeah, our lead is Vasant Ravi, if I'm pronouncing and that correctly. And uh, there's this other gentleman. He's uh, uh, probably Bharati uh, Raja, uh, uh, Ravina Ravi. Yeah, a couple uh, other people. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it was came out in 2000. No, it says 2021. I thought it was 2022, but uh, it'll be. It a, may have had a COVID delay. Yeah, it'll be 100 cents for the view. I don't know where you can watch this. Uh, I don't actually think it's on any uh, streaming platforms currently. Uh, we got sent a screener, uh, which is very kind. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, but it's I don't believe on any, unless in, you guys can tell us in India if it, if, if it is available somewhere. I don't believe it's available anywhere here. But Rick, your initial thoughts, please. It's a shame it isn't streaming anywhere yet. Very grateful. We were given a production copy of that thing that we can watch and hopefully spread the word for those of you who don't know. Um, I can tell you in advance, I know that the man sitting next to me loved this movie for a lot of reasons. If he didn't, then I'm not Italian. I, that's all I can tell you. I, I, this, this, is, this is a film. Yeah. And for those of you who've been around, you know what we mean by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a film. It's it's masterful cinematography. It's masterful oh. sort storytelling. At one moment, it feels like cinematography. So shout out, yeah, there. Shreyas Krishna. Uh, the score is magnificent. At one moment, it feels like you're watching LJP. The next moment, you feel like you're watching on your Kashyap. The next moment, you feel like you're watching Alejandro eat in your Ritu. But it all, nothing feels disjointed. Yeah, and and I just. It's probably my second favorite film after the LJP film that we've seen this year. This year? Yeah. Uh, I think this thing is incredibly well done. Yes. Yeah. Um, shocker of the year. I love this film. Yeah. What a, uh, what a surprise. What a... <laughs> this is a I just... Repeatedly, I kept thinking, Corbin's going to be so uh, happy. This is... And the reason I... Um, and thank you to the direct, once again, this is not a... Obviously, we don't do this, as you guys should know by now. We don't do paid reviews or Never. any... Thing like that. Never have, never will. I did reach out to the director because I couldn't find this. Uh, Which and, is a shame. And I asked, would you happen to have a screener of something that we could possibly watch? Because I can't find it anywhere. And he was very gracious. And, um, and it, it was actually back, back in January. And he's been very gracious. We just now got to it because we were in classic month when I got it. Um, but the reason I wanted to watch this is because I heard it was the most violent film, Indian film of all time. Oh really? That's because I, I asked on Twitter. That's a, that's a that's a true conversation I, to have. I asked on Twitter. I was like, "What do you guys think is most violent Indian film of all time?" Because I feel like Indian violence is not what my 
definition of violence is in a film, right? No. And like it I if I think something is violent, it's gory, it's it's gratuitous. It's gory, yeah. it's gratuitous and it's also I don't rooted cons- in real gore, not yeah. not over accentuated yeah, gore. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, this might sound funny. Uh, I know John Wick is a violent film, but I, I like I would not gory. I though. wouldn't describe that as a violent film for me. There, that's an action film. Yeah, it's an action film which has no, violence. It has violence, but, but I, I wouldn't describe it as a violent. I know people would because people described Lord of the Rings as a violent film, no, no. and I was like, yeah, sure, it has violence, but I w- that's not what I would describe as a violent film, right? Exactly. It's like you could have a film that has a lot of profanity, but it, the language isn't vulgar. This film, um, I do think is the most violent Indian film, even though I know this man was probably heavily constrained by budget constraints, and he probably would have gone even farther if, if maybe so, if he was given the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> like, not as many, like, um, like cutaway stuff or, or stuff like that that w- require prosthetics, require uh, VFX right, and right, stuff like that. That right. I think this director, I, maybe I'm wrong, uh, would have liked to have gone even farther. But this is a one of the most poetically violent art house films <laughs> and this is what kgf2 wishes it could have been i would agree with that statement wholeheartedly <laughs> I, I put it on twitter i said i probably watched the most violent indian film i've seen and the film that kgf2 wished it could be and i don't mean that by box office obviously kgf2 bad no but i don't care about that no. i'm talking about the content especially with the ending of this film yes I was like, oh Hell? <laughs> this is one of the best climaxes yes that you don't see coming in so many ways. There's just there is nothing but superlatives. There's nothing bad yeah. about this film. There's there's, there's it, nothing to criticize. It's a beautiful it, it's kind of strange to consider this an art house film, but let's talk about that first because I love this aspect of the film. The cinematography, Incredible. lighting and just the direction, obviously, they all go hand in hand. Well, my 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 first thought was, okay, this is what they call a debutante directing piece yes. for Aaron, right? Yeah. I thought either Aaron's a cinematographer or the cinematographer is experienced because the way that this is shot is so dependent on this. I mean, all films are that way, but this one in particular requires such a a, a marriage of artistry between director, cinematographer, and editor that I, I had to look up the cinematographer and say, okay, have we, have, where have we seen this experience? Because this is Oscar level cinematography. Yeah. This is just, in an odd way, it, in many respects, and this is a completely far afield film. Uh, this is the only comparison I'm making. It's the, it's the quality, okay? We watched the other night because she hadn't seen it. I had Andrani watch All Quiet on the Western Front with me. Okay. She repeatedly gasped from the cinematography yeah just went oh like that and i said i I know trust me i know it's why it won all the baftas and it's for me the most artistically excellent film of the year for me the cinematography in this though it's a completely different thing there were moments where i thought the cinematography was as artistically intentional as skilled as that it for me the cinematography was as good as cinematography gets yeah there were shots in this man and it's so funny because you could tell this didn't have a, a massive budget. You could, but they also you couldn't tell oh, as they, well. They did. They did as much as you could yeah, do with it. Like you could, like it doesn't look like a student film. I'm not saying not that, at all. At, at, like in the slightest. But you could tell this didn't have a big budget. But, no, that there were choices they made of shooting things. Yes. Primarily because it was going to save them money. Yes. Yeah. But and, it works. Yeah. They justified but, it. Holy shit. Like, the, there were shots in, and it was about probably halfway through when when, when Rocky came. Uh, and I, I do find it funny that his name is Rocky. I know. Just like KGF. And he has a big gun, just like in KGF. That's why I said this is a film that KGF 2 wishes it could have been. Because it, it's almost, it's a very similar story in terms of, like, he just wants revenge. And he's got to go get it. But it's so much deeper. So much deeper. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you could have, like, KGF could have... I, you know what I feel about KGF two. It's just this is what I wanted from obviously on a much bigger scale, but this is what I wanted from KGF two. But like when it's the fight scene and they're going through the abandoned whatever mm. blue 
Yeah, on, on, <laughs> yeah the levels on the far away level. shot. And then in the middle, they, yeah. uh, I was like, this is some of the most beautiful lighting cinematography I've ever seen. And, and it's with the, with the uh, um, fight choreography going on. Just from a distance. Freaking gorgeous. Gorgeous. Some of the shadow shots. Some of the... Holy shit, the cinematography. So shout out to... Um, oh, to again, yeah, to uh, Shreya Krishna. Krishna. And obviously, the whole lighting department and the director. I want sound uh, design. Holy cow. You're, the whole sound design team, which I don't know if you looked at the credits, there's a, it was a big team of sound people and it shows. Because yeah. the, the attention to sound, both with the graphic nature, which was just in your face, but there were so many times where sound was so intimate and delicate and subtle uh, it's there's just there really aren't enough superlatives, and it just it's a shame, you know. Too often, uh, just and it's just getting that way more and more. But I'm encouraged. Uh, this may sound strange to some of you, but I'm really encouraged that that um, I don't want any film. I'm not rooting for films to fail. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm encouraged that the most recent Marvel film, the Ant Man, which I I had no intention of seeing because Marvel has lost me. Yeah. Um, which is a shame because Marvel was at the peak, not just of box office, but the reason they were at the peak was because their storytelling was so damn good. Yeah. I mean, Endgame is just, yep. it's so damn good. Yep. But they've lost themselves in franchising and over, I mean, there's a new Marvel film every three months. Yeah. And it's just about, it reminds me of something that Mr. Murdoch at Fox News said on the stand in this lawsuit that Dominion has against them. And he was asked about the texts where all the, the people, at Fox knew exactly what was going on. They knew there was no lie or steal. They were talking amongst themselves about how it was bull crap, but they were lying publicly because that's what the audience wanted. And Mr. Murdoch said, it's not about red and blue, it's about green. And it's, it, it just pisses me off that too much the movie industry, I get it, and films need to make money, but too often money is put behind things that are absolute pieces of dog shit. Mm. When a film this good doesn't see the light of day. Yeah. It's it is aberrant to me. It deep it's deeply painful to me that a movie this good can't even be streamed right now. Yeah. And I don't know why that is, but uh also uh, le- uh even well, before we get into the actors, which I, I do really want to get into, the um the uh the sound design and the sound on this. Incredible. There were times that I was like, that feels like almost breaking bad a little bit. Oh, like, yeah. Like, like when the, um, there was one like Western feel thing that they put behind something. I think it was the, which I love the actor, whoever did it. Who showed up on the motorcycle. Showed up yeah, on the motorcycle. Yeah, just start playing that and was like, kind of banjo thing. And in the beginning was like rolling over people with like a rough fucking roller. Yeah. And I was like, hell yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, he won. Great look. That, yeah, that, yeah. He was a fantastic look. Everybody was perfectly he was, cast. He was, he was a great cast. Yeah. But I love the score in this. It Yo. was subtle. Yeah. And they let kind of just the visual and the acting kind of do its thing. The moments of dead silence. Um, but also added so much to this film. And then also there was songs at times. And there was once right. like, um, <laughs> it was funny because my wife was kind of watching. It's not, it's not her style of film. She doesn't, it's like, she doesn't like stuff that has bunch of murder and violence and all yeah this is not for the kids uh, the kids or the squeamish obviously it's very my style of film yeah um but she was like next to me and she's kind of watching and so the song went on and it was like them in the car and it was beautiful song she's like oh this is so pretty nobody's dying right now and then the next second (laughs) the motorcycle comes (laughs) Yeah. Like, oh damn. Smoke too soon. And I love I love (laughs) I know in the eyes. I also love that oh. moments like that translated into there were moments where you were expecting the violence and it came and you got the payoff. Then there were other mo- – there were so many times where you didn't know what was going on. Example, our our main uh, antagonist and his son and he holds him down and he's going to oh, chop great his finger scene. off. I was shocked he didn't. Yeah. I was sure he was going to cut something off. Yeah. And the fact that he didn't was, again, underscoring – the focus on story, not sensationalism. That's why the gore in this is 100% justified yeah. at every moment because I didn't feel like... And the, the reason it also reaches a level of really being gory is not just that it happens, but the duration upon which we sit on things sometimes reminds me of Nawaz in Wasper 2 yeah. taking his time... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's so many. And there's messaging. We'll get to messaging in a little uh, bit. There's one thing about the messaging. But let's finish. I want to uh, talk about finish before we get into the, yeah, yeah, the actual yeah. story and the messaging of it. Uh, our, our lead. Uh, we normally start with that. Sorry. It was Beautiful. Just, there's so much about this film to talk about. But he did. I loved his performance. I did and too. He's also just a captivating actor. Yep. Like he has an interesting look. Very interesting. Great. Very eyes. unique. Uh, and I, he was so understated the entire time. It was the, like the opposite of like somebody who's like a a, a mass you know, he's a mass murderer, right? And he, he kills people, right? Uh, re- regardless of if it's for good or bad, whatever. Obviously, what he used to do back in the day. Yeah. Um, but you you felt for him, you cared for him, uh, but he also was so subtle. And you, he didn't do his intimidation by no. yelling and, and and screaming and all that kind of stuff. He was like, "Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking kill you." Right he now. he was very much. I know you haven't seen this film, and the films aren't the same, but the character is very similar in that I felt the whole time he was a very reluctant criminal. That he originally he had never really set out to be this person, mm-hmm. and even in the being of it, he did it. But even had a sense of, I don't want to do this, but I've been pushed. Because you killed my mom. And now you I've been pushed. Sister. Yeah. I didn't want this, but I've been pushed. Yeah. What am I supposed to do now that I've been pushed? I can't unpush me. Yeah. You can't unring my bell. But I, 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 one of the questions I would ask him if we talked about his, his work on this is how much work he did in prep and backstory. Because this... this this Rocky feels like a fully formed, complete human being that every scene I believed he came from where he was before. I believed he loved these people. I believed he had reasons for doing what he was doing. I never saw him indicating. I just, he just, he did yeah. what you should do. He was a phenomenal. In this role. Uh, and so was uh, the, the, f- the uh, our, our antagonist. Um, oh, yeah. That Great whole, job. That, uh, say his name for me one more time. Uh, forgive me again. Uh, Bharat Raja, uh, that scene with his son, with his son, uh. was so good. Uh, also, like <laughs> immediately once this was done, I was like, I really want to recreate that first scene when they were uh, the first met murder scene when Rocky came in and murdered all those people that were dancing. Oh yeah, I was like, I really want to recreate that scene. <laughs> <laughs> I just got so excited about the possibility of like recreating this mass murder scene. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully if you ever make an American film, cast this guy. Do you know if Anya Rog has seen this? I bet he has. I, have, I, I would I have, hope he has. I have he no has. doubt. One, he's uh, it's such a love for Tamil cinema. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he like presented I really hope there's something going on that we can find out about where there's already been something taking place where this gets put on a OTT platform for people to be able to see. I can't imagine why it wouldn't. I understand his next film that he's helming, that they're in pre-production on, is a Danush film. Oh, okay. So uh, that makes me happy. And I, I really do hope this gets legs and it can be seen because it's 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 deserving. Yeah, it is. Um, but uh, other stuff I want to talk about, obviously, in the overall story, I love the... Making sure his uh, he knew his audience would be intelligent enough to understand what he was doing, with if it was in gray, mm. it was in the past, right? And everything that wasn't in gray, yeah, we didn't need to be of, told three years prior. Yeah. He just we went there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that when uh, directors think their audiences are intelligent enough. Um, I I I think he could have gone even farther at times. I'm, my bet is that it was budget constraints in terms of some of the kills. Yeah, like watch um, it rather than seeing it from a far shot and hearing the yeah. sound be it. But sometimes it was so cool because he like in the shadows, like when he killed that guy's son, and he put his like I'm pretty sure into his intestines around his, his head, <laughs> which I was like, that's great. But it had to be shaded. <laughs> yeah. So there's a Hitchcockian element to that that could have been a directorial choice Maybe. about seeing less is Maybe. more. However, there may have been a budgetary thing of, man, I really wanted people to see the saw going through the arm and it being removed, but we just didn't have the prosthetic that, budget. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, he, he killed his, this other guy's son in front of him, and he wanted to make sure he killed the sister in front right. of Rocky, which I didn't, <laughs> I, like, even though I was like, something's going to happen, I didn't anticipate them coming in right now. No, at that moment. And, and just like, st- 
was like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. So many great kills in this. Uh, and I love that he used like a hammer and a pick most of the oh, time. Yeah. Like it just made it so much better than just a headshot. Uh, and and the, that I love that one shot you referenced earlier for just the beauty of the cinematography. So I love the them, stunt work yeah. of that where it was fully choreographed like a dance and people did some falls um, while he's just standing watching. Um, it, yeah, and then you bring, you bring the whole element at the end of, of the little girl, of, and then now he needs to protect this little girl. And yeah. I was so nervous when that guy came up to her at the at the stop, bus stop or wherever she was. The pedophile? Yeah. Yeah. I the sex like, trafficker? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, no. And then when Rocky showed up, I was like, oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's one of the ones I wanted. I was like, I want this. But I'm glad that at the end they did show us, like, what he did to him. Yeah. But I wanted, like, I wanted to, I wanted to see it happen. A little bit uh, more. <laughs> Which that, that goes into some of, like, of the many things in the messaging, one of the things I took away, and I don't know if Aaron had an intentionality behind this in the script and the directing. I can't imagine he didn't because it's so, in my opinion, an overt message among many was it's a subtle overtness <laughs> if i can use those contradictory terms subtle over yeah of of the many messages one of them that was the biggest takeaway for me was how often women females are subjugated to the tyranny the evil the pride the ego and name all the other negatives of men yeah, who often do what they do thinking that they're providing, thinking they're protecting, and unwittingly or sometimes wittingly abuse, confuse, terrify um, women. Because mm -hmm. as much as there are bodies that fall, the real victims in this are all the females. Yeah, The mom, the sister, the little girl. Um, and even the messaging of her having the hearing aid yeah, and selectively taking that off so that she doesn't have to hear. Mm -hmm. um, yet she continues to see. I thought it was just incredibly powerful messaging among many. That poetic sequence. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trusting they took their time with the English subtitles because they read poetic his sister laying on the face of the clock and that whole, the messaging of time and time being a thief. Yeah. His, his, the consistency with which he goes to his, the watch. For being such a, like a gangster film, it was such an art house. Film oh, as well. such an artistic um, piece of work. Which you, you don't normally get. I love the ending. It's like we've seen quite a few Indian films now, especially recently with that machine gun. Kaithi, Vikram, KGF all have the. Like, yeah, but the, this one was wonderfully understated it was it was a little bit more believable that this guy could hold that thing yeah yeah i uh and i loved it i was like oh shit it's i also machine gun. i also loved our antagonist watching him and almost having a sense of pride in the guy that used to work for me he's this is what i would do but in the end you know what you son of a bitch i'm taking me not you <laughs> <laughs> oh careful shall we sorry come. that's okay very sorry um <laughs> And again, that just down to, of course, the other messaging of if he who lives by the sword is going to die by the sword, even if it's by their own hand, because they are so literally hell bent on being in control Yeah. that when it even comes down to the very, very end, if I'm going to die, it's going to be by my own hand, not yours, because I'm the motherfucker in control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... Yeah, I, I love this film. Yeah, uh, it's one of my favorite. I, I'd have to go back. We've seen a lot of great Tamil films. It's probably one of uh, minimum top five uh, Tamil films for me, um, without even looking. One like, of the best gangster films I've yeah, ever that, seen. Yeah, we've seen for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. This is one I'll remember and recommend to yeah. a lot of people. I just wish I could actively recommend it for them to well, give because I'm not going to share this copy we got. I can't no. show that to anybody. Yeah. So I really, really hope this gets a, a playing field on OTT. I do as well. Um, anyways, let us know what you thought about this film, if you enjoyed this film, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, don't know what it is, but you can let me know what it is down in the comments below. Could you not like and it? what should be our next uh, film, uh, Tamil film by the director, the actor, or just well, Tamil in general. The next director film is going to be the next one he does, because this was his debut. 
directing piece. Well, you know the um, we never we never got to see it, but he he had a follow up. He had a follow up, and we loved the trailer. Not a surprise. I don't know if you remember it. I don't know what it was called. That. Sunny Kayalam. Um, and I think it starred last year. I think it starred the girl from Gargi. That Sai or something like that. Okay. Remember that? Remember that? Yeah, I do. But do you remember she was like, she hopped out of a van and then just started stabbing somebody? Do you remember that trailer at all? Like it was very violent. That's not ringing a bell. Uh, 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 like, um, uh, I don't know, let me have a clear. I mean, if there's a thumbnail, uh, that. Okay. Do you remember that at all? I don't remember her jumping out of a van and stabbing. Like, it, regardless, the, the trailer, we love the trailer. Uh, and it well, was. Well, see, it says it went to Amazon Prime. So come on, Amazon, jump yeah. all over this, I, please. But I, and I don't know how the film was. Uh, uh, I, I think I heard mixed reviews, which is why we didn't see it, and I didn't know this director at the time, and, or else I would have right. just hopped right on it. But, right. Um, I remember we, we loved it. So we I do have that I think one. it's one that I reacted with Steph, and then, because you were gone for whatever reason. It could have been. And then If I it was 2022, it might have been, was it was it the spring of 2022? Because that's when, <laughs> that's when Johnny and I had COVID. Mm, I don't remember. Okay. Anyways, uh, let us know what the next Tamil film we should watch is down below.